Let's now learn about a couple of basic JavaScript operators. So here I already created like the title for this lecture and also commented out the code here of the last lecture. Okay, so we could actually do this here in different files, like one file for each lecture, but I prefer to just keep it everything uh, simple here, all in one file. Now for operators, they can be, for example, the simple math operators that we already know, like plus and minus and times. And then beside that, in JavaScript, we have a couple of other operators that I'm also going to show you. So in simple terms, operators are like functions that are written in a special way in JavaScript. And in case you're wondering what functions are, don't worry. Again, we will talk about this a bit later. But for now, let's actually take a look at some math operators and how we can use them in JavaScript. So let's calculate in what year John was born. And that's very simple. So let's call it year John. And so we have 2018, which is the current year, minus John's age, right? And remember, we used to declare it as 28. And so let's use the same here. And so now we can then log it to the console. So let's take a look at that. And indeed, 1990. Okay, so this year, the minus is a math operator in JavaScript. And let's not do the same for, let's say, for someone else, like John's friend. And let's say he's called Mark. And so 2018 minus 33. So Mark is 33 years old. And now you see that we are starting to repeat some of the values. So for example, 2018 here, we are using it multiple times. And so let's declare it as a separate variable. So that is what variables are for. Okay, so we can say var year is 2018. And so now instead of having to reuse this 2018 here, we can then write year in these two places. Okay, so let's take a look at that. And of course, it still displays the exact same number. But if we wanted to change the year now, let's say to 2020, well, then we wouldn't have to change it here in these two places like we had before. So before, if we wanted to change the, the year, we would have to change it both here and here. And that's something that we always want to avoid in programming. And so we define this year in one place and then it gets used in these two places here. Okay, and actually let's also declare uh, all of these variables here in the same line like I showed you before. So year, then year John, and year Mark. Okay, and then remove these vars from here. So this just looks a bit better. So that is just the minus operator here. But of course we can do all kinds of math here. So for example, we can multiplications. So let's say we wanted to add two years here. And so uh, ah, now it's not defined. So <laughs> this is of course not now, but it's year. Well, actually this should be called now because now is the, is the current year. So 2018. So what we want here is this to be called now and also here and here. All right. And so let's take a look at what happens then. And indeed, it logs 2020 to the console, which is 2018 plus 2, right? Of course, we can also multiply. So let's say now times 2. And we can, of course, also divide. So let's divide by 10 here. All right. Logging it all to the console. Well, then, of course, we see that this is 2018 times 2. And this is 2018 here divided by 10. And so we end up with this like decimal number here. Okay. So these are the math operators that we used here. So let's add a comment here saying that. And now I'm going to show you some logical operators. So let's write that down here as well. And so let's say that we want to compare the age of Mark and John and figure out if, for example, John is older than Mark. And so for that, we can use a logical operator. So first of all, let's actually define these ages here as different variables. So H John is 28 and then H Mark is 33. And so of course here we use H John and then down here H Mark. So let's create a new variable here called var John older. And then we will say H John greater than H Mark. Okay. And then of course we need to log it to the console here to see our result. 
And so let's take a look at what happens now. And we see our result is this boolean and it's false, okay? And so what this means is that h john, which is 28 here, is of course less than h mark, which is 33. And so basically here we ask the question, is h john greater than h mark? And the result of that is false, okay? And so our john older variable here turns out to be false. Now if it was the other way around, if we asked h john less than h mark, well, then it should be the other way around. And so, yeah, indeed, it is now true. Again, because h mark is 33, which is more than 28. And so we have a way now of basically creating a Boolean variable using one of the logical operators that I just showed you. And there are many more that we're going to explore a bit later in the course and actually in this section in a couple of videos. So math operators here are pretty straightforward. Then these logical operators which are also very important, as you're going to see later throughout the course. And then before we leave, I also want to show you the type of operator. Operator. Okay, and this operator is a bit different than the other ones. So the ones that we used up until this point always required like two things to compare or to add or to multiply. So now times two, or now divided by 10, or h done less than h mark. So we always set two operands. But with the type of operator, we only have one. So let me show it to you. And so let's log to the console the result of using the type of operator on, let's say, the John Older variable. Okay, and so basically what this will do is to tell us the type of this variable. And so indeed, we get Boolean. And that's because obviously this is a Boolean variable. So we saw that here as it returned this true. And as you learned in one of the last lectures, a true or false value is always a Boolean. Right? Remember that? So let's try it out with some other stuff here. So type of, and let's now say h done, and this should be a number. And indeed, it is. Let's actually copy this now. And let's try it out with a string. And we don't have any here. Let's just write it ourselves. Mark is older than John, for example. And then also, let's try uh, something else. So let's just declare a random variable here and not define it. And then let's log to the console the type of this. And so what do you expect that the type of x will be? So let's test it. And I hope you know that it will be undefined. Okay, so that makes sense because Indeed, we did not define any value for the x variable. And the one before here, of course, is a string. So this may not seem like a big deal to you here, uh, this operator, but actually you will see that we will use this here uh, in the future and actually also later in this section. Okay, so this is the very basics of JavaScript operators. Now in the last lecture, we will keep working with operators where I'm going to show you some more, let's say, advanced stuff. So don't wait and come with me right to the next video.